It's late fall and the water's down into that 47 to 48 degree range, depending on if you're up shallow or if you're out in the deeper parts of the lake. And what we're doing is covering the deep structure, looking for bait fish and bluegills. If you find the food source, you're gonna find the big fish in the lake. You can see in the 360, we're coming up on harder bottom. That's that bright return on the screen. I'm always watching that 360, waiting to see some structure or cover come on there. And if you look at the top there, it's some really good looking stuff. It's as simple as just aiming that direction, casting your jiggle, and then it hit the bottom. Once you get used to those rings on your 360, which I have mine at 60 feet, it's easy to get used to casting the right distance. This fish here hit it right when it hit the bottom. So I just hit spot lock and that's gonna hold us there. Not super windy, but still to be able to stay in that same spot is perfect. You can see this is a really solid large mouth. Really good way to start the day. That one hit that all terrain jig with the five inch spark shad on the back. The Texas cross skirt. It's a green pumpkin spark shad. You can see it absolutely choked that bait. Really nice healthy fall fish. That one was four pounds, five ounces, and a really great way to start the day. The fish is 18 and three quarter inches. So a really thick, healthy specimen of a fish. You can see those really nice rocks at the top of the 360. Those are about 60 feet out in front of the boat. It's as simple as just, again, aiming right at that direction and letting your jig hit the bottom. A lot of times the fish will hit it right when it hits the bottom, but if they don't, then you just start working it in. And a lot of times, especially in this cold water, I let it go slack and I just reel it in really slow. Then I just stop, let it hit the bottom again, and then just kind of repeat that process. Always watch your line. They're just ticked. Again, just wind down and then just lay the hammer on it. This is the second fish of the morning. And again, another nice solid fish. Not as big as that first one, but a really good sign that there's gonna be some fish out on this deep water. A lot of the time, I'm always staring down at that 360 screen because you always wanna see that structure and cover in front of you. If you look at the screen right there, loaded with nice rocks. And right when that jig's coming through there, that fish just smoked it. Oh, it's a nice one. Holy smokes, what a start to the day. Barely made any movement. Three fish already. And this third one is an absolute dandy fall fish. That jig is right up to the roof of the mouth. Big solid frame on that fish. Man, what a beautiful fish. This one went five pounds, two ounces, and the fish is on its way back to where it came from. So I see something on the 360 just a little ways in front of the boat. Just a short little cast. And again, let that three quarter ounce jig hit the bottom and they're slowly hopping it back and changing it. And that fish grabbed it almost as soon as I started moving that jig. That was almost vertical jigging, 20 feet of water right over the side of the boat. That fish just absolutely freight trained that jig. It's another dandy fish. Wow, when, we, when these fall fish start putting on the feed bag, it is so fun to be on them. <laughs> Look at that one. Eyes popping out. Solid frame. 
they are all just so chunky today. Bellies are starting to blow up. Love seeing that jig choked way down there and hook right up through the roof of the mouth. Today it is quality fish and they're biting non-stop. There's nothing better than watching those big fish swim back down to the depths. So you can see how slow I'm working this. You know, some of those fish are biting right when it hit the bottom, but some I had to work it a long ways back to the boat. This one here absolutely stopped the rod when I lifted up on it, and it is pulling like a freight train. This one actually pulled that jig right out of the rocks when I was coming across the top of them. Boy, when they come up there in that clear water sideways, they look so nice. Man, the quality. Everyone's just solid, thick, full bellied. That combo, man, it looks so good and those fish are just loving it. I have a nick in my line after ripping all those big fish to those rocks. So it's a perfect time to retie. Plus that spark shad is absolutely destroyed and beat up. With this 20 pound floral, I'm using a San Diego jam knot. I've been using it for years and I trust it. So I keep using it. So I take that new spark shad and I shorten it up a little bit. I don't want it to hang back quite as far in that jig because a lot of times in that cold water, those fish will come up and it'll actually grab that rear half and miss the hook. So just shortening that little bit puts the odds in your favor of getting that big five odd hook to stick right on the roof of their mouth. And then I'll always top it off with a little bit of super glue because if you glue that bait up into that rubber skirted jig, that skirt protects it, plus the super glue holds that bait from sliding back on every fish. Once it's done, especially when it's cold out, you gotta let it sit for a little bit to dry good. If you look at the top of that 360 screen, you can see those big rocks that are spread out. And I always like the ones that are spread out. If they're all on top of each other, it doesn't seem like it holds the number of fish as often. If you find those big ones spread on the flat, but in that same general area, I just love it because I think they mill around and they can just feed so much better. This cast, I'm reeling constant. And there you saw that rod tip kind of doink as that fish came up and grabbed that jig. Okay, now it was swimming towards me and it actually came off. So I just let the line fall right back down to the bottom and that fish came right back and hammered it again. Now, if I had reeled that in real quick and tried to cast again, that fish probably would have already left and not been right there. This isn't a giant, but it just shows you if you miss a fish, let your bait sit and try to get it to bite again. I've been mixing up the retrieves so far this morning and here you can see me stopping reeling, stopping, letting it hit the bottom, kind of mixing it up. And it seems to be triggering a lot of those fish. On the 360 there, there's not a whole lot, just a couple scattered rocks. But I'm really close to where some more rocks will start. Another dandy fish. This one's got an eye missing. Looks like a zombie bass. I'm leaving a lot of slack in here on this cast and just dead sticking on the bottom. That's giving those big fish a chance to swim up to the jig, check it out. And they really aren't that active when it's just sitting there in front of them. You know, that triggers them and all of a sudden, bam, they hammer that jig. Every fish so far, just solid cold water fish that are full of energy. They're putting on a lot of feed, getting ready for winter. 
This is another really nice large mouth. Most of these fish have been coming over to that 15 to 20 feet of water. You can see barely hooked just on the corner of the mouth there. That could easily be ripped by a too hard of a hook set or pulling real hard on it. There's some really nice cover on the top of that 360 there. Just a little bit to the right and just again just cast past it let the jig hit the bottom and it's super easy to bring your bait right over that sweet spot probably where those fish are holding by you know if you're casting to a waypoint you might get close but you're not for sure dead on that 360 there man every single cast is right where it needs to be again another solid hookup this cold water has these fish just pulling super tough, no matter what size they are. This one here is actually one of the smaller fish of the day. Still a keeper fish by anyone's standards. Every size of fish will hammer on that five inch spark shed. Here I got a little close to the structure and cover down there. You can see those really nice rocks in one small area. So I stop my jig and I'm just basically vertical jig in a three quarter ounce bass jig with that spark shad. Just hoping that there's a fish sitting right next to those rocks and it sees that commotion and comes over and hammers it. If I didn't have the 360, there's no way I'd keep my bait down there vertical that long. And you can see a fish hammers it right underneath the boat. And it's a beautiful one. For sure the biggest one of the day up to this point. Man, what a beautiful fish. Another mouthful of jig with that five inch spark shad. Look at the broad side of that bass. Beautiful thick fish. Just hammer on the jigs here on this late fall day. It's got craw chunks coming out. I have the tournament scale width on the back deck so I can get an accurate reading on those fish. It was a little over five pounds. Beautiful Minnesota largemouth. And we lost a little weight right there. Here's a perfect example of how the Ultrex held me there and the 360 was showing you those rocks still in the exact same spot. So easy to get back up to the front of the boat and make that exact same cast without having to do any work. You can focus your whole time on that cover and where that last fish came from. So you have a chance to duplicate that cast and get another bite. Oh, and there that rod's loading up. Took me long enough. So same little patch of rocks, back-to-back -back casts, and two really nice fish. Oh, almost went over the side. <laughs> what a pair of fish on back-to-back -back casts. Here's a great look at what I just caught those two nice fish off of. It's just a nice little patch of rock and with the shadow, you can tell they stick off the bottom a little ways and have a nice little ledge there where the fish can just hide by them. This Bass Dynasty scent stays on your jig for a very long time. It's that real thick paste. You rub it in those strands and a half hour later, you can still feel it on the skirt. It never gets old looking at your 360 screen and seeing rocks and a drop-off show up on there. You just know when you cast out there, especially on a day when the bass are on fire, that you're gonna get bit. And here I'm just slowly dragging that jig along the bottom, reeling it real slow, letting it sit, and just covering that whole piece of structure down there. 
There you can see that rod load up again. And with that scent on that jig, those fish are not letting it go. I got the Destroyer Warhammer rod. I got 20 pound floral. Abu Garcia MGX reel. It's just a heck of a combo when you're casting these big heavy jigs out in this deep water. So here I made the move to the calmer side of the lake. And I'm just out fishing on the weed line. There's just a rock here and there, nothing major. And there's some wood spread out a little bit shallower. This is a perfect area to bomb cast that spark shad and then just reel it along that break line. You can see here, I'm reeling it quite a ways before I'm killing that bait. So you can just picture those fish following it and then they see it hit the bottom, they just go in there and drill it. Different side of the lake and the quality of the fish doesn't look like it changed one bit. You can fish your whole season here waiting for a bite like this where every fish is between four and five pounds or bigger. And you have to enjoy every second of it. This fish was out in that 12 to 14 foot water right on that weed edge. All these are just perfect specimens. This one is five pounds, two ounces. Off to swim another day. So I just keep working my way down this break line, continuing to cast in front of the boat. Now I'm usually within that three to five feet of the edge of the weeds and where it drops into that 12 to 14 foot and there's no weeds. And here's another fish that grabs it. Again, just solid fish. That Warhammer has been one of my favorite rods to fish with for big jigs and swim baits. Oh, and it's another good one. And that's where I made a mistake. <laughs> another quality fish and it broke the line. New jig means new application of the scent. Like I said earlier, once you put that Bass Dynasty on there, that pace, it stays on there a long time. So that sun's been beating down on this side of the lake all afternoon and it's warmed up. You know, the water's 40 degrees and it's, it's getting to that mid to late fall. Things are about to get crazy here. <laughs> I love it when you lift up on that war hammer and it absolutely like stops you in your tracks. Oh, you get a glimpse of that big fish. Man, look at the size of that fish, the head on there. That mouth, thick belly. All I can say is what a day, and it's not over yet. Big, healthy, clean looking fish. What a bucket mouth. Since it feels like the fish are biting on every cast, there's no reason not to get back up front and keep on working the shoreline. And a lot of the same old cast out, hit the bottom, and then just reel it in for a ways, and then just kill it. And I really think when you kill it and it dives back and hits that bottom, it really triggers those fish that are following and to go down there and take it. And here you see the line pop when that fish hits it. And this one is pulling super, super hard. Had to run to the back corner to grab that fish. It's another solid chunk. The water is now in the mid to high 50s, so it really went up today.
this is one of those days that you wish would never end. Back for another cast. I'm working this one really slow to start with. There's a little bit more weed there. I moved up just a tad shallower. I'm kind of finessing that heavy jig through it. Just kind of riding it right over the top of the weeds. And as soon as I get out of there, I kind of let it fall back down and hit the bottom again. There one hammers it and I lose it right away. So I drop it right back to the bottom. There, picked it up again. Oh, lost him one more time. So I let the jig fall for the third time. I just hold it there. I'm just in front of the boat. Came back one more time. This thing has absolutely got the rod doubled over, pulling on that war hammer. And it is pulling. All I can think is I hope you can see this fish. By far biggest fish of the day. Might be my biggest bass of the season at this point. Time stands still when you're trying to grab a giant fish. And I got her. <laughs> Look at that fish. Man, looking back on this fish brings back so many memories. Absolute giant. Biggest fish of the day. I get on that three quarter ounce jig with a five inch spark shad. What a special fish. Six pounds, two ounces. I work so hard all season chasing for a six pound bass. And man, I lost them two times on that cast. It'd been so easy for it not to bite again and never have caught that fish. Yeah, woo! This is what I fish for right here, man. All the hours, the miles, chasing trophy fish and getting them on camera. Love it. <laughs> man, it feels good. I've been working so hard for that six pound bite this fall. I've been blessed with a bunch of fives, but man, that, that six pound mark, that's what I shoot for. And there's a lot of lakes that you don't have a very good chance of getting them. You gotta put yourself on the right water. It also helps that they're putting on some fall feed getting that extra weight built up that one there was just a big thick solid 21 inch fish big gut Be beautiful beautiful fish i made another move and man it's just so beautiful in the fall when those leaves start changing colors the wind's laying down nice. The water warmed up quite a bit and those fish are just getting more active as the day progresses. One thing stayed the same though, it's that jig and spark shed combo and just varying the retrieve and it's triggering those nice fish to hit it. It didn't take long in this new spot to have the rod double over and have another battle on my hands. And the theme of the day is solid, solid bass. Look at that chunk. This is one of the most special days of the entire season. And it's just so fortunate to have these. And we're coming off crazy weather. The water is up in the mid 70s and then it crashed because of our horrible temps and then it bought its way back up again and then now it's back down and stabilizing so those fish have a chance just to kind of get in their fall routine. 
This fish here is a four pound, 14 ounce bass. And there's no reason to quit now. Sun's going down. We don't have many days before it ices up for the winter. And you take advantage of every minute you get on the water. I'm still in that same corner. Just got done catching that nice fish. And the very next cast. It feels like a repeat. The only thing different on this fish is he wanted to go right and then he came back left. He kind of threw a change up. Oh, just a beautiful fish. They're so pretty and just Perfect. There's not hardly a mark on any of these fish I caught. They're as healthy as any fishes I've seen in that three quarter ounce AT jig, Texas cross skirt, and a five inch green pumpkin spark shatter absolutely lights out. And that wasn't just today, it was the entire season. The fish just pounded that combination. Man, that's picture perfect. <laughs> I don't know what to say except, man, this is what drives me. I mean, the miles, the days on the water, this is the stuff that makes me just keep going back and back and back. Trying to figure the fish out and trying to catch trophy fish. Six pound, two ounce fall giant that's put on some serious belly size. <laughs>